Okay, so welcome back. We are on question six. Took me long enough. And um, this is the last question in the chemistry past paper for January 2018. Now we ask, list four unique properties of water as it relates to the human body. I gave four. They said, A, water is polar. It dissolves chemicals in the cells so that chemical reactions such as respiration can take place. Two, water has a very high melting and boiling point. Hence, it can exist as a liquid here on Earth, which is essential for our everyday life and survival. Then C, water has a high heat of vaporization. When water evaporates off of the skin of humans or other organisms, it takes away heat, in turn cooling the body. In other words, um, because of this property, we do not overheat. D, water has a high specific heat capacity once the human body is made up of, um, oh, sorry, since the human body is made up of 70% water, um, water changes in external temperatures does not affect body temperature so humans can exist in extreme environments so reading this over water has a high specific heat capacity since the human body is made up of 70 percent water changes in external temperature does not affect body temperature so humans can exist in extreme environments so you can think of people living in the great australian outback it's very hot there it's over 100 degrees celsius uh, you could think about um, people living in the Saharan desert, you know, so and people living in Iceland, it's very cold there. So I spoke about two hot places, very hot, extremely hot places, and I spoke about one extremely cold place. There are people that live in Antarctica too. What about the Eskimos? The Eskimos, um, they're still living in very cold places, so yeah our body is able to withstand a lot of things <clears throat> now in that aspect we call places remember that uh, water freezes to ice but the good property about water is that its solid counterpart is less dense than its liquid counterpart so even though ice would freeze the eskimos would be still able to fish and hunt because guess what the water only freezes on top it floats on top well there's liquid water underneath for all the, the marine organisms to live in and so that's a good property of water as well and relating to the human body because water is less the ice is less dense the humans are able to consume food in very cold environments so that's that's probably e you know we could add that in there it sounds plausible now it says water exists in liquid solid in gaseous form describe the test for water vapor water vapor causes dry cobalt to chloride paper to change from blue to pink or you can use anhydrous copper to sulfate which is white crystals when they get wet or when the air is when there's a lot of humidity in the air um they turn blue so if your copper sulfate if your copper to sulfate crystals in your laboratory are blue that means they're hydrous they have um, absorbed water they've reacted with the water in the air and that's why they're blue but usually it's it's not usually it's white copper to sulfate is white unless water hits it okay so that's it that's the test for water vapor and you know they don't usually ask these so I would um, I would um, tell you that it's best to learn all of your tests learn every single one of your tests water vapor for carbon dioxide and because it's usually they ask you about carbon dioxide you know so learn all of your tests that's in the back of your concepts text and get with it get with the program now it says, in some Caribbean islands, calcium hydrogen carbonate causes temporary hardness in water. This can be treated by the use of washing soda, which is known as ca um, sodium carbonate. 
right, a balanced chemical equation including state symbols to show the removal of temporary hardness from water using this treatment. So here we have calcium, hydrogen, carbonate. The calcium molecule, the calcium ion is C2 plus, Ca2 plus. Right? So it's Ca2 plus. And this, the hydrocarbonate, the hydrogen carbonate um, anion is HCO3 minus. So when you just ignore these signs, and this goes out, say, and this is obviously, not obviously, but this is regarded as one. And so when they come together now, you have Ca, and you put brackets around the anion so that all the atoms in here will be accounted for. So you have HCO3, and put a two out there, right? And that's why we have it like this. Aqueous, and then we have sodium carbonate, which is also aqueous. When the bond now you get a salt, calcium carbonate, which washes away that's the removal of the hardness. This is the hardness right here, and then this now reacts with the hydrogen carbonate anion to get sodium hydrogen carbonate, right? And we balance it out. We have two sodium atoms, we have two sodium atoms here. We have two hydrogen carbonate anions, we have two here. And then we have the CO3 that went over the same way, and the calcium, which is just one. Okay. Now, we have this other question here, which says, Pure water does not conduct electricity, but can be acidified using dilute sulfuric acid, so it's H2SO4, for this to occur. Predict the ions that will migrate to the anode. So we know anions migrate to the anode and cathode, cations migrate here. So you can make a notation here. So you remember, I mean, no cations during the electrolysis of dilute sulfuric acid. Write a balanced chemical equation including state symbols for the electrolysis of dilute sulfuric acid. Right? So what I usually tell my students is to draw a beaker, draw a beaker, and put the ions that it contains. So we know in this beaker we have water and we have sulfuric acid, H2SO4. So what ions make up water? So I usually put the cations on one side and the anions on one side. So the cations, anions. So what cation makes up water? Hydrogen, ion. What Anion makes up water, the hydroxide anion. What cation makes up sulfuric acid? Hydrogen. And what anion makes up the sulfuric acid? Sulf, the sulfate ion, right? So what we do now, we circle the one that's lowest. So if you know your reactivity series, you know, please, please send Charlie's monkeys and zebras in large high cages most securely guarded okay and this one is Fiona's son never comes by in October okay and so we know the ones that are lowest in the reactivity series so this one is the reactivity series for the cations and this one is for the anions so we know we're going to pick the lowest so in here there are no this they're both the same cations so hydrogen can come off at the cathode so this is the cathode right here so at this end the cathode and the lowest for this one here is the hydroxide anion. The sulfate anion won't come off because it's higher up. So you circle the hydroxide. So we know the ions that's coming off at the anode would be the hydroxide anion. And the ion that comes off at the cathode would be the hydrogen ion. So now we're going to write a balanced equation. But first we have to write the half equation. So writing the half equation at the cathode, 
we know that the hydrogen ions will give off H2 gas, right? Because it's hydrogen ions in solution coming off as a gas. And once you have a plus here, how many atoms of hydrogen do you have? It's two. So we just add, and reduction happens at the cathode. So we know reduction is a gain of electrons. So this is perfectly correct. Then at the anode, we know the anode, at the anode, oxidation occurs. At the anode, you could write it incorrectly first. We have 4H minus. And what comes off is water plus oxygen gas. And at the anode, oxidation happens. So there's a loss of electrons. But this is incorrectly written. So how we write it correctly? We add four electrons here to get rid of on this side, and we add four electrons over here. So we're going to end up with 4OH minus. And we put an arrow, and we end up at, oh, and this is not balanced. We have four hydrogens, so we need to put a two right here. We have four oxygens, so we have two, three, four. So we're going to put 2H2O liquid plus O2 gas plus four electrons. So we are com um, we're just concerned about this and with this. Now, to make the electrons here equal to these, we're going to multiply by 2. Okay? And so this will give us 4. Well, let me not write it here. So, yeah, let me write it here. 4 H plus plus 4 electrons to give H 2H2 gas. Okay? We put these two together and we get 4 H plus plus 4 electrons plus 4 OH minus to give 2 H2O liquid plus O2 plus 4 electrons plus 2H2 gas. So we put our gas, liquid, aqueous, and then we have aqueous as here. Anything that appears on the next side, as the other side, you get rid of. The same thing up here on the left as the right, you get rid of. Everything else stays. So these two can go back together. And what we end up with is 4H2O. Right? And then we have here 2H2O plus O2 plus 2H2 gas, gas, liquid, liquid. This can come away. So we can get rid of this. It's 2H2 minus this because we want to balance the equation, right? And what we end up with is 2H2O liquid to give O2 gas plus 2H2 gas. And pretty much that is it. That's your balanced equation. Okay? I hope this helped. See you later.